is nasty. On this week's Bondi Vet Top 5. She was much skinnier and had a lot less hair when she first came in as well. Now look at this side, honey boy. Oh, oh boy. yeah, they're horrible. Such a sweet little dog. I, yeah. I don't really understand why anyone would give her up. As soon as I go anywhere near you, it's just jump straight back into the kennel at the back. At number five today. So who have you got in here? So over here we got Jack. He's a male border collie, oh, and um, we were just hoping for your help, really, just to meet him, see how he responds to you. At many tears, Cassie is taking Scott to his next patient, a timid sheepdog desperately in need of some TLC. So how was Jack when he first came in? He was really nervous. When he was in the van, he was kind of hiding at the back. He was actually carried off the van. He was just really unsure. Can I say hi to you? Hey? Answer no. As soon as I go anywhere near you, it's just jump straight back into the kennel at the back. He's clearly a dog that needs a lot of work. That's a good boy. Yeah. Come on, Jack. Good boy. That's a good boy. Yes. Yes. Oh, dear. Oh, he's just so unsure, isn't he? Delicious. Come on, Jack. Come on, baby. Out to your bed. Good guy. I'll bring him a bed out. Yeah, yeah. Cassie moves Jack's bed closer to Scott, hoping that will encourage the extremely nervous dog to connect with him. Oh, good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Oh, hello, Jack. But he's just hiding away. Doesn't want to come anywhere near. He's just looking for security. Okay, Jack. Cautiously, Scott offers Jack some food. Yeah, have a little treat. Good boy. That's a good boy. Yes. Finally, he begins to trust the newcomer. You are such a good boy. Hey? Hello. Do you want to come a little bit closer? Hmm? So, a lot of the body postures this guy is showing is very much shy nervous, furtive, not confident. He's making himself look quite small and just keeping his distance. You know, it just shows that this guy's uh, just fearful of strangers. He's probably fearful of all humans, which is pretty darn sad. Good boy, there, good boy. Well done. Oh, you're so handsome. Are you so handsome? It's just amazing, isn't it, that just spending a few minutes with a dog can just see them transform. And just the fact that no one's given him the time of day. No. So I think it'd be quite nice that over the next few days, we'll just see what progress we can make. Just come and hang out with, with him. Hey, Jack, do you want to hang out? Come on in. Hey. Hello. Hello, buddy. Hi, Scott. Welcome to my, my little dog floor party. Oh, wow, look at this. Yeah. Scott is about to begin a behavioural training session with shy border collie Jack. I'll just pass you that. There we are. He's going to spend some time with you if that's okay. Yeah, a bit of boy time. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Enjoy, Jack. Be a good boy. The former breeding dog is fearful of human contact. Try that. Oh, yeah. I'll have that. It's great. Let me just try not to move too fast and try not to engage his eyes too much because he's constantly being deferential and looking away from me, but I can feel he's looking at me now. Are you looking at me now? Oh, good boy. Good boy. So I've just rewarded that with a treat. He's so good. My plan for Jack today was just to break him out of the kennel mold and just bring him into a space a little bit more like a family home to try and encourage Jack to feel more like a dog. Oh yeah. Hey, you're so beautiful. What a handsome boy you are. Hey, you're a lovely boy. He has the potential for affection. You can see it already. It's just beautiful. But in his case, he just hasn't had life. He's not been walked on a lead. He's not been given a toy. He's not been trained. This is a dog that's going to give someone so much joy and companionship. You can just feel it. 
With Jack slowly coming out of his shell, Scott has one major goal he wants to accomplish before their time together is over. It would be an incredible achievement if I was able to take Jack for a walk because he needs to learn that skill. But not only that, dogs love walking. You know, it's what they're designed to do. I'm really happy with the progress I'm making with Jack. He is a special boy. He has so much heart and I'm just looking forward to just eking out a little bit more. So tomorrow, Jack and I fancy a walk and I really can't wait. Come on in. Oh, good boy. Good boy. That's good it. boy. Come on, let's go. Good boy. It's okay. That's good, isn't it? He's doing classic herding behaviour where he's hurting me. Jack has come a long way since Scott began behavioural therapy with the anxious border collie. Okay. Good boy. Yeah, keep your attention on me. That's a good boy. Good boy. That's it. Well done. He hopes to take the former stud dog even further during their final session together in the Welsh countryside. He's a good boy. Come on, he's a good boy. Ah, here we go. The green rolling fields of Wales. Look at this. Oh, you're so good. Come on then, it's okay. Good boy, look. Is this fun? Doing so well, you're not pulling on the lead. You're staying close. What do you think? Hey, freedom. Sit. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. And you didn't cower that time. Good boy. Oh, I'm over the moon with his progress. I just can't believe that this is the same dog I met three days ago. He was cowering and hiding away, pulling back. Yeah, you know, I could barely touch him. And now, look. <laughs> I could stroke him. He leans into me now. He's leaning in. He goes, oh yeah, actually that thing you do with your fingers, that actually feels really nice. And he's learned to sit in about five minutes. So truly incredible. Come on then. Good boy. Let's go. Come on, let's go. You're so good. It shouldn't be long before Jack's adopted by a loving family that will give him the kindness he's never known. What a clever boy, yes. Let's go find your new home. Yeah. And some great news for our rescue dogs, with Border Collie Jack now doing exceptionally well after he was adopted into his forever home. Good boy, look. Number four. Good girl. Oh, you poor old sausage. Bedraggled little pup Apple has been brought into the Bondi Referral Hospital sash by Denise from the animal rescue group Paws. Good girl, Apple. She's been in the pound for two weeks and nobody came forward for her, so we rescued her. She's not doing too well. She's got a very nasty head shake. Oh, sausage. It's stinky. When Denise picked up the little stray, she was shocked by her dreadful condition. Her ear is all matted together. I can feel under her tummy, she has burrs in her tummy. She's very smelly, but she's a very sweet little dog. Her little tail wags all the time. She's happy. Hello again. Hi, Lisa. How are you going? It's Good. been a while. How are you? Good. You want me another little friend? Yes. Hello. Isn't she sweet? <laughs> Denise is hoping emergency vet Dr. Lisa Chimes can get to the bottom of the little Maltese Shih Tzu's disturbing head shaking. All right, we'll bring her through. Let's take okay. a look at her. What Denise does is truly incredible. She takes dogs like Apple from death row at the pound. I just hope that from my physical exam and some questions with Denise, we can find out what's going on. Okay, she's microchipped, mm -hmm. but whoever owned her hasn't claimed her, so probably didn't want her because yeah. she does have something going on. Okay, I can see there that head's having a little bit of a bob. Bit of a shake, hey, Apple, Apple. Apple, Apple come over here, darling. Let's have a look at you. Oh, it's really bobbing around there, isn't it? 
Apart from Apple's obvious dishevelled condition, when I look at her, I can see that she's got a condition that's causing her to shake and bob her head all the time. Someone's been neglecting you. It's interesting because it looks like she's had a haircut, but parts of her are so matted and unkept. So someone has done something for her, but... It's weird. It's weird. It's yeah. very weird. Such a sweet little dog. I, yeah. I can't really understand why anyone would give her up. It happens, Lisa, mm, all the time. She's very upset. Yeah. I can't understand how anyone would give up such a gorgeous, friendly, sweet little dog. She's absolutely delightful and to think of her in the pound all by herself just breaks my heart. So Denise, I would like to run some tests on her because we obviously don't know where she's come from so it would be great to run a full panel of blood tests and make sure she hasn't got any internal problems. Meanwhile, Lisa is still trying to work out the cause of little rescue dog Apple's uncontrollable head shaking. I don't have a history on Apple and my physical exam can only go so far. So doing a blood test is the next reasonable thing to try and work out if she's got anything going on inside. Hey Krista, this is little Apple and Denise. Hi Krista. So we're just going to get some blood off her. The bottom line for Apple is she must get better, completely better, so that we can put her up for adoption and find her a home. All right, little one. Lisa wants to make sure Apple's kidneys, liver and other organs are all working normally before she starts treating the head shaking. Good girl, you're so brave, huh? Girl. All right, so we'll just run some tests on these. If everything's normal, then we can start treatment for this shaking problem she's okay. got. I just hope that we don't find anything really serious on these. You know, she could have anything. Yeah, we'll just say our usual prayers, Lisa. OK, I'll be back in a second. Okay. Apart from Apple's coat malnourishment and shaking, she actually seems like she's in pretty good condition. I can't understand why anyone would have dumped her, and hopefully these blood tests will come back all clear. Isn't she Gorgeous, cute? isn't she? She is. She will be available for adoption, you oh, know. Great. She'd like to go with a vet nurse. Would she? Yeah, she would. OK. Yeah. All right, ladies okay. and Miss Apple, everything's good. All clear. All right, Yay. so she's got no sign of any internal diseases. Her blood tests are completely normal, so I'm really, really happy with that. Yeah. So now we can focus on this shaking problem she has. One of the obvious things Apple has is what we call an intention tremor. So it basically means when she has the intent to do something, when she performs an action, that's when her tremor is worse. And for me, that is a classic sign of a syndrome called shaker disease. So we don't actually know why it happens, but for some reason these young dogs get inflammation in that part of the brain that controls their coordination and as a result they have these tremors and the shakes. Fortunately, the treatment for shaker disease is pretty simple. It involves treating her with cortisone to try and control that inflammation in the cerebellum, the part of the brain that controls her coordination. Lisa also wants little Apple to get an immediate dose of TLC. I think this little princess needs a clip and bath and she'll be feeling a lot better. Good girl. Okay. Lucky girl. She's a lucky girl. Yeah. Let's see how she goes with a bit of a groom. OK. Apple's fur is in a really sorry state. It's matted, it's filled with burrs, urine, faeces. She must be really uncomfortable and I can't wait to get this coat off her. Right, let's do this. What's this noise, honey? All right, that's OK. The bedraggled little pound pup has been diagnosed with shaker syndrome. Good girl, honey. We just get all this knotted hair off you. After her clean-up, Lisa will start the pup on cortisone treatment. Her coat back here is just covered in urine, burrs, poo. Oh, so we're getting you. through it really quickly, darling. That's the way. No, my oh, God. Yeah. Good work, Lisa. That is unbelievable. It's like an ear. As I move over Apple's ears, these huge mats come off that are practically the size of her ears. 
I just can't understand how anyone could let their dog get to this state. She's been released. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is awesome. Nearly done. Feel better, Gil. And that's it. Apple's feeling pretty good about herself, but I don't think she knows what's coming next. She is about to have a bath in a sink. Oh my God, honey. Have you ever had a bath before, Bubs? Probably not. Her <laughs> <laughs> little head's really bobbing, Lisa. I'm sure. There's a lot of screaming and wriggling as we're trying to bath Apple. I don't think this little dog has ever had a bath before. You're all done. Come back to Denise. There you go. There you go. Oh, that feels so much better. So because all her blood tests are clear and otherwise she's pretty healthy, we're going to put her on some cortisone. Mm -hmm. And hopefully as that kicks in, the tremors will start to stop. And eventually she'll go into complete remission. Once Apple's head tremor is cured, hopefully she can be adopted out. I think Apple's a real fighter. She's got a real zest for life. She's put up with a lot today, coming out of the pound, having everybody examine her. You know, she deserves to find the best home. Come on. Good girl. It's been three months since Little Apple began treatment for her debilitating shaker syndrome. And finally, there's some good news. Apple is doing brilliantly. The head wobble has stopped, uh, the medication has worked, and everything's great. So now Apple's ready for a new home. Come on, Apple. Look who's over here. You excited? Here she is. Hello. 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 Look. Oh. Good girl. How are you? So, Sushma, what do you think? Oh, she looks really beautiful. We are not letting her go anywhere. We love giving dogs another chance at life. So we are going to adopt her and she stays with us forever. Oh, you're a lovely girl. Sushma and her family are just wonderful because to them, a dog is a family member. They include their dogs in everything. Any dog that goes to live with Sushma's family is a very lucky dog. Good girl. Apple's recovered. She's happy. We could not have asked for a better ending for Apple. It's great. Bye, Apple. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Let's go home. Come on, Apple. Good girl. This week's number three. I'm just on a long drive up to North London to visit the All Dogs Matter charity. They are a fantastic organisation that rescue dogs that are stray here in the capital. And today they've given me a call about an old dog that has a problem list as long as your arm. So I'm just driving up there straight away to see if there's anything that I can do to help. It's a baby, aren't you? Animal rescuer Sonia is waiting with a 14-year-old English bull terrier called Arnie. So we rescued Arnie from the local pound. Arnie's coming in a really bad condition and he really needs Scott to have a good look at him and, and make him better again, make him the handsome boy that he was. Hello, Sonia. Hi, Scott. How are you? Great to see you. And you. This is Arnie. Hello, boy. Come on. Oh, he's an English bull terrier. He is. He is. Oh my goodness, you are so handsome, aren't you? Boy. You are so handsome. Sonia wouldn't have known this, but I had a rescue English Bull Terrier when I was going through university. His name was Zed. We had a massive bromance. I absolutely adored him. So to see another one here that I can help today, I think it's really special. He's got a nice shiny coat. He's a little nice, bit thin, lovely. isn't he? Mm -hmm. A bit underweight. A bit underweight, yeah. And, and anything else? He's got problems with his ears and his teeth as well. His teeth, yeah. Are they bad? Can I have a look at this side, Arnie boy? boy oh, boy. yeah. They're horrible. But then we've also got his paws. Oh, ouchie, archie. Look at that. Yeah. Straight away, and that dew claws growing, growing there. Growing. And, and then, then oh. he's got this huge lump. Oh, my goodness me. That didn't grow overnight. No. So someone has literally just left that yeah. to I mean, grow. How long would you say that's been there for? Oh probably a good year, I would say. I mean, it depends on what it is. 
And that's the real worry, is it could be something benign, it could be something horrendously malignant. So we won't know until yeah. we take it off. It really is sad to see a dog come in at that age. For us, it's, it, it's shocking, really. I mean, it's disgusting that people can abandon a dog at any age, but when they really need you and they're in such a bad way, it's, I've, I've got no words, really. Who abandons a dog? I mean, he's given you all that love and attention mm -hmm. and joy, and then at the tail end of his life, when he's got a few issues, mm -hmm. dump him. Just heartless. It's too sad. It's always very upsetting to see any rescue animal and understand why they have just been turfed out of a loving home. Arnie particularly is pulling at my heartstrings. I absolutely love them as a breed. I know what they're like. I know how loving and loyal they are. And his owners have gone, you know what, we've had our best years with him. We're going to turf him out. It just angers me to the very core. I think I might take him with me, son. OK, I was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Scott's going to take him back to Richmond. Him and his team are going to do some wonderful work on Arnie. Bye, darling. He has got a lot of things wrong with him at the moment, but if anyone can make him better, paws crossed, Scott can do that. Let's go to Richmond, hey? Let's show off the big muscly boy. Yes, yeah, yeah. Boy, come on. Here we go. Come on. Scott has arrived back come at on. the Richmond clinic with come elderly on. rescue dog, Arnie. Come on. Good boy. Can you come? Hi guys. Hi Scott. Can I introduce you to a very special boy? Arnie is this getting is a warm welcome from Nurse Nathan and receptionist Kirsty. He is a rescue dog. Unfortunately, his owners, after having him for 12 years, 13 years, have decided that they're just going to dump him. Aww. He's an old boy with quite a few problems. Come on in. Go with Uncle Nathan. Here he is. There he is. Come on in. <laughs> All right. I've just put a call through to a really good friend of mine to help with Arnie's care, and she is very much a fellow Bull Terrier lover. Ali, well, she's always wanted to be a veterinary nurse, and I thought this was the perfect opportunity for her to have a spot of work experience with her favourite breed. What do you reckon she's, she's gonna... <laughs> she's gonna go sick for you. She is. She is. Ali, this is Arnie. <laughs> Don't cry, you're gonna make me cry. Oh, hello, hello, darling. When I walked down and saw him, it was, well, it was a shock. It was memories. It was, yeah, mixed emotions, but he's such a sweetheart. Ali's first dog was an English Bull Terrier called Ruck, and it was through him that she first met Scott. Ruck has since passed away, but Scott and Ali have been firm friends ever since. He's beautiful, isn't he? He's really gorgeous. It just brings all the memories flooding back. So you start thinking about your dog and all the history with Scott and just how sad I was to lose mine. I just wanted to meet the little fella and see if he was all right. Go and put some scrubs on, my dear. Scott has another motive for calling Ali in today. He needs to talk about what <laughs> he's hoping she might boy. even consider adopting the old dog right. once he's nursed back to good health. What he needs is a mountain of love. This boy has been shortchanged and he needs love urgently. Ali has such empathy and such care for animals and she really wants to make Arnie feel loved, which is possibly the first time in his life he's really felt it. Ta-da! Ah, look. Oh, Looks more ready. nursey already. So Very I good. Am. Right. I'm ready to look after the fella. Yes. So he has quite the litany of problems and we need to just prioritise as his Veterinary care is what we're going to do, all right? So, okay. to start with, have a look at this. Oh. Absolutely horrific. Oh my God, it makes me so mad. Also, you can see his toenails are very long. Very sad to know that he's got ingrown <gasps> ones as well. And then last but not least is <gasps> this is the piece that I'm most concerned about. about. Very vascular, very large, very nodular. All things which could suggest that it's something not very nice. And right. if it is nasty, is it likely to be elsewhere? It could well be. Yeah. Mm. I volunteer with dog charities and it never stops making me sad how people can just abandon a dog. It's a, just a catalogue of neglect to me that people haven't taken their role as a dog owner and dog carer and, you know, dog mum seriously. 
All right, but let's sort this immediate issue out. I mean, look at that. It's gone right, right around. Right back into the pad. That must be agony. Yeah. It just shows how amazing dogs are, that he is in constant discomfort and yet can still find love in his heart for us, for even us. though humans even though we have... do that to him. Exactly. God, they're so they're big tough, and thick. They? Yeah, classic Bull Terrier nails. Okay. There you go, mate. That's what healthy, normal-looking nails looks like. Much better. No more digging in. So already we've made his life better. Absolutely. The nail clipping was straightforward. But now it's time for the far more complicated removal of the nasty lump on Arnie's bottom. The lump under his tail probably worries me the most because in older dogs, there are some fairly nasty types of cancer that can develop around the anus. Some of them, like carcinomas, for example, are incredibly malignant and if present, will be fatal very quickly. If you can pull his legs a little bit further back, I really wanna see that sort of come right up to me. That's it, great. Arnie's surgery is about to begin, and already Scott is worried about the elderly dog. He is breathing a little bit roughly, so we are concerned about the anaesthetic, and we need to just make sure we keep a very close eye on him. All right, I'm cutting now. Are you ready to go? So what I'm gonna have to do is cut through the skin. Once I start cutting into it, I can see it is just bleeding everywhere. But thankfully for Ali, she was tough enough and she didn't faint. Dog okay now? Yeah, it's fine. Here we go. This is gonna come off now, likely. All right. There we go. There we have it. Nasty looking thing. And unfortunately, it's so big and so thickened that I wouldn't be able to say that we've got good margins so that we have 100% cure. But we need to send this up to the lab and the pathologist will tell us what kind of cells make this up and are they bad ones or is it just an abnormal growth of an, an old boy? Let's hope and it's the latter. And if it's a bad one, what you're saying is you might not have got it all. That's right, and I can't take any more away because I'll then affect the ability for his bum to work He'll be incontinent, which is yet another reason why he won't get a home, so. I meet lots of rescue dogs. I've met rescue bull terriers, not many, but I haven't been involved in surgery. And, and he's so neglected, he's such a mess. Who's gonna take him? Come on. He's been a right soldier, hasn't he? Yes, love him. The next few days here at the practice is gonna be an agonizing wait because we need to wait for the pathologist's report on Arnie's lump. There you go. Hopefully, if that comes back okay and it's not a nasty type of cancer, then we still have to put the poor old boy through yet another anaesthetic to sort out his horrendous teeth. And then we've got to find him a new home. So there's lots of question marks still to come in Arnie's future. No, no, it's just me. It's just me. I know. I'd like to think that Ali's thinking about taking Arnie. Darling, I know. He is definitely twanging her heartstrings, and I think that he will be a very lucky boy if he gets to go home with Ali. It's OK. Oh, boy. In Richmond, it's time for Arnie's second surgery, this time to fix his badly neglected teeth. Oh, look, he's there. Hello. Hello. Who's Who's it? It? Who's Who's it? It? Are you getting careful? Scott's oh, invited Ali back to assist with today's yeah. surgery. He's definitely happier. The wound at the back of his tail here, uh, where we've removed the lump, um, is healing very nicely oh. indeed. So nice assisting the other day. And even better news is the results have come back. And although it looked like an incredibly nasty tumour, it had the suggestion that it was going to become something nasty, but actually it's benign, so. No way! Yes. Oh, me! Just a nasty, horrible lump. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. More unsightly than... Yeah! Dreadful. Yeah. Oh, no. That's the best news. Yeah. A little bit of sunshine in our boy's life. But Arnie's good news is tinged with sadness. You'll After be Scott found out also, the poor old dog is death. death. Stone death. Stone death. Yeah, he can't hear a <laughs> yes. thing. Nothing. 
Hey. Scott and his team are now so more he's, determined he's so than well, ever to give in. the brave bull terrier a better life. Yeah, relaxed. So now it's I mean, time to start his much-needed dental Wait, surgery. So just... Let's get you downstairs, my boy, and let's sort those teeth out. Although I'd love to give Arnie a Hollywood smile, this isn't a choice. I have to do this dental. His teeth are horrendous. There's a huge amount of bacteria and infection built up along his gum line, which will be having a major effect on not only his quality of life, but also the health of his liver and his kidneys. Hold your dental chart there, please, Do nurse. I not need any gloves? Uh, well, we might get you pop on some gloves in a second. OK. Should I fill his name in? Yes, go for it. As Ali's here and she's a hard worker, I'm going to put her to work. So not only will she be my dental nurse for the day and help me to understand which teeth are going to stay and which teeth are going to go, but also she'll do a little spot of scaling and polishing. This is years worth of tartar that we're going to get rid of in an afternoon, which is, it is quite satisfying, yeah. Thought <laughs> you could be quite rough. Yep. Doing a dental on a dog like Arnie is pretty dirty business. It's very grubby, it's quite bloody, and at times it's really quite rough as well. We have to put quite a bit of force in to remove some of the teeth that are loose and then scale all the nasty tartar that's been building up over a number of years. So 401 is loose, so that's going to come away. Eight of Arnie's teeth are badly infected and will have to be removed. So when they come out that easily, they're meant to come out. His gums are also in shocking condition. Do you want the goggles? And a thorough clean is needed to remove years of built-up tartar and plaque that's contributing to his gum disease. It really must have been such a painful time. Every time he opened his mouth to chew, it must have been an exercise in discomfort. But now all that tartar's removed, just like when you go to a dental hygienist yourself, your teeth feel shiny and fresh. And that's exactly how hopefully Arnie will be feeling. Oh boy. Well, that's the last thing you need to do. Hopefully you can have a lovely retirement now. Ready for a loving home. Mm -hmm. Do you know anyone? I'm trying to be very subtle when it comes to Ali and maybe considering that she should take Arnie home with her. Uh, I'm not normally classed as subtle. My wife would say I'm like a brick through a window. <laughs> but Scott's not so gentle persuasion seems to be working. He's a lovely boy. He is, and when he's up, he's such a joy. Mm -hmm. Tail going. It's a classic love sponge. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> hey. We could share him. Maybe we dog share. Yeah. Oh, you have to sell Zoe. <laughs> <laughs> hmm? That's it. What a good old gent. Okay, now remember, best behaviour. Hey, mind your P's and Q's. Today, Scott has brought rescue dog Arnie oh to a local park. Walking down the hill with Arnie, immediately I get a little bit nervous. There's real trepidation because this is a make or break moment. Arnie has the chance of a new life with someone absolutely amazing. So I just hope this works, but I am very, very nervous. Uncle Scott's on his way with a surprise. Scott is yes. hoping his good friend Ali will give Arnie a new home. But it all hinges on how well Ali's dog Mabel gets on with the old bull terrier. I can see your potential new family over here. Come on. My biggest priority is Mabel. I hope the meet and greet goes really well, but I need to be sure that I'm doing the right thing for her before I can do the right thing for him. Hey, Al. Hey there. <gasps> Who's this handsome guy? Look at him. Who's this handsome guy? Jenny. Say hi. Oh, look at him. There you go. Aww. Oh, <laughs> they're going to do a dance. They're going to do the lead dance. Arnie and Mabel lock eyes and love at first sight. Oh, look. I think <laughs> that's the first time I've seen him do that. Oh, yeah. are you kidding? No. Oh, look. Mabel and Arnie seem to get along brilliantly. Look at that. Look at that. Oh. oh. Immediately, Arnie starts to play bow, which is a exhibition of happiness where they want to engage another dog in play behaviour. That's so, so positive. They start walking around and smelling each other, which is very normal for dogs. And then they get to a point where they're so comfortable in each other's company that they pretty much ignore each other. That is an ideal result. That's brilliant, isn't it? Very calm, very relaxed. Yeah, yeah, I'm really happy with that. Very happy, waggy tails. Look. We really couldn't ask for anything better. No. The look in Ali's face shows how calm and how happy she is about the situation. Looking good. He needs a good home. He hasn't had one, has he? And I think I can give him a pretty good home. Yeah. It feels kind of right. 
So happy. So happy. It's so nice. It might not be for a long time, but it'll be for a good time. You'll be fed well and loved, sweets. Yeah. You'll be there, and you've got a personal physician. That's it. <laughs> The meet and greet went brilliantly. So, yeah, I'm really, really happy. I think he's found a home with me. You're right there, Mabel. Hey? Yeah. You're right there. <laughs> hey? You're missing out, darling. Did you just You're right. <laughs> You're right there. As Arnie's an old boy, he still needs a little bit more treatment before he's fully ready to go to his new forever home. So he's going to come back to the practice with me, but very soon I get to help this boy as he ventures forth into this wonderful retirement. Happy families. I hope so. Number two. Scott is meeting his first patient of the day in a North London park. Here you go. Rowena is a foster carer from a dog rescue charity. Hey, Rowena. Hi there, Scott. Hi. And her latest charge Ethel. is a yes. young pug cross you? named Ethel. How's it going? <laughs> You're all right. A little bit nervous of new people still, but... Yeah, and very noisy baby. <laughs> okay. It's very sad, but this poor little girl has come from a puppy farm, which doesn't surprise me because I can see her abdomen is quite baggy. It's clear that this very young dog has had multiple litters, and it's also very much at the hands of someone who's incredibly unscrupulous. It really is a travesty. It's really sad to see her so in like such a bad condition, obviously, and she was much skinnier and had a lot less hair when she first came in as well. Luckily for Ethel and her sister and a few other dogs, they um, found their way to All Dogs Master to find new homes. It was clear that she was in the worst condition with the mange and being so severely underweight. So she came straight into foster care with me. Ethel really isn't the picture of health. She's very thin, so she's probably had a very poor diet, but also her skin is really bad. And also it's very patchy where the hair has fallen out as a result of a mange mite infection. Well, it looks yeah. like you've got the mites under control, which is great. You can see some new hair growth growing back, but that's not her biggest issue, which I can now hear. Yes, yeah, so I say when you come closer, exactly, that's the first thing you sort of notice about her is that slight sort of grunty snort. But she really does struggle and it sounds awful, even though maybe she doesn't show us that, you know, it is maybe difficult for her. So at she, rest, she makes this much noise. Yeah, but her body shakes and she sort of really seems to be struggling to just breath. breathe normally. Yeah. yeah, well, it's one of the occupational hazards of looking like that when you don't have a nose and you don't have much of a nostril either, do you, sweetie? It means that you can't get enough air in. Can I have a listen to your chest first, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, her heart sounds nice and clear, doesn't it, sweetie? But that's after I take into account all the huge amount of noise that's coming from up here. It's like she's snoring while she's awake, which is clearly not normal. There is a real rise in the popularity of flat-faced dogs. Therefore, a lot of dog-owning public and people that see them on the street go, oh, it's normal for them to make that much noise, and it really isn't. And certainly in Ethel's case, any point when she's at exercise, she's going to struggle to get the amount of oxygen she needs into her system, and that can mean that it can become life-threatening. So basically what I think we're going to need to do is to give an anaesthetic back at the practice in Richmond, look down the back, of her throat and likely find an elongated soft palate. So it's almost like a blockage, sort of, so she can't fully breathe in or fully Yeah, breathe. and every time she does, it sort of... Catches. ...flaps in. away, it catches, it goes into the trachea, the windpipe as well, which is one of the reasons why she's making so much noise and potentially trim that. And alongside that also, you can see how her nostrils are, are almost little slits. What we need to do is just open them up and those two procedures together will hopefully increase the amount of oxygen she takes in with each breath and reduce some of the sort of reverberation that you can hear. It's a lot easier for her. And make it much easier for her to breathe. Hey, sweetheart. Well, we're really so lucky that there is a procedure that can help Ethel, because it will make a huge difference to her life, especially when she goes on to a new home where we're hopefully, you know, she'll have some dog friends to play with. And if she can, you know, run around and act like, you know, a dog should, then it will make all the difference for her life in the long run. Not only are you a princess living with Rowena, getting consultations in the park, but now you're going to have a nose job as your first veterinary <laughs> procedure. Get your nostrils done, lucky girl. <laughs> yes, but all for a very good cause. Hello, ladies. Hi. Hi. This is Ethel. Hi, oh, baby. She's really cute. Wow, she's in 
pretty terrible condition, isn't she? Bit of a scabby genetic mess, aren't you, darling? Back in Richmond, Scott is introducing rescue dog Ethel to nurses Reagan and Sam. It won't be a surprise to you to know that she's come from the puppy farming trade. She and a few others were rescued. The three-year-old pug cross is suffering from severe breathing problems caused by genetic abnormalities. I can't believe this is still happening, really. And when we know so much about it and people are still putting money into this industry, it's just crazy. So I'll leave you guys to get you ready for surgery. I'll go get changed. All right, cool. see you in a sip. Ethel as a case just really upsets me. Why was she ever bred in the first place? Because the condition that she's suffering with is genetically inherited. She's suffering, so why would you spread that suffering to other puppies? Let's give her the anaesthetic and uh, start having a look down the back of her throat. Because Ethel is a pug type breed, a brachycephalic or flat faced dog, she doesn't have much of a nose. And so a lot of the structures that are present at the back of the nose in a longer uh, faced dog are shunted into the back of the throat. And what you can clearly see now that Ethel's on the table is that her soft palate is sort of flapping in the breeze like a curtain in an open window and going right down and into the larynx. That means that every breath she takes, she will sort of swallow that part of her soft palate and that leads to that incredible noise. So as soon as we tube her, you'll find this no noise will go away. And there, the sound of silence. Okay, good girl. So let's get her next door and get started. The procedure I'm about to perform on Ethel is basically the shortening of the soft palate, but also performing a alar plasty, which is basically widening of the nostrils. So what I need is for you to hold the soft palate out the way. So yep. I'm gonna place two stay sutures in. You hold these two sutures and then you can lean on me for support. <laughs> and I'll then trim the soft palate accordingly. Cool. Get you to on either side. Yep. Like that, that's it. So there's the soft palate. That's the bit that's going down our little girl's throat. And that's the bit that I need to trim. If you give that quite a bit of tension, yeah. you have to put your elbows on my shoulders. It's absolutely fine. Okay. There we go. Oof. A bit of disgusting sewing smoke, and that's a very chunky piece of soft palate. What you can see is by removing that flap, you've now got an open airway because yeah. you can see that that is basically like trimming the curtain so the curtain's not going down the window anymore. The window is nice and open. You're getting lovely airflow. <laughs> so I'm just going to over sew that. If you just release now and we'll have a little look. Wow, that really is such a difference. Yeah, actually you can see a larynx. Yeah. Good, okay, so that's part one. So now we're going to do something called an aloplasty, which is changing the shape of the nostrils. In this case, I'm doing that in order to increase the nostril size and therefore get more airflow going into her nostrils, more oxygen, therefore she should be able to breathe quieter and exercise better. See how much that's opened up? Here we go. There is Ethel's new nose. <laughs> Ethel's new nose. <laughs> Mm. And not a bad looking one at that. It is a lot bigger, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Let's wake this girl up. Oh, good girl. Good girl. Hello, baby. Hello. Guinness Book of Records for that tongue. Look at that. You can lick your own forehead. <laughs> like that's, that's incredible. <laughs> but listen to you. Mm. I can I'm hear anything. Exactly. That's my point. Yeah. What's incredible about this particular procedure is that literally straight after the surgery, you will see, or rather hear, a massive difference. And this dog should hopefully breathe a lot quieter and a lot easier. Have a little nap, start organising that spa treatment. Yeah? Lovely bath for you, I think. Yes, before you head off. In Richmond, rescue pug cross Ethel is recovering well from her throat and nose surgery to correct her noisy breathing. Come on then, let's get you buffed. There's a good girl. Hey, she go. Oh, she go. Oh, you are here. I couldn't hear you. <laughs> Nurse Jess and practice manager Maz are now going to give the little rescue dog some much-needed TLC. Is that nice? Is it? Oh, thanks. 
Ethel's responding really well to all the affection and attention. I think she's really coming round to us all and getting used to a better life compared to what she came from. You better get used to these, because once you get out and about in the park, bet you're one who's going to run in the mud, aren't you? You're going to find the muddiest puddle. We thought it'd be really nice to give her a little treat, a little bath, smell a bit nicer, make her fresh and beautiful already for her new forever home that she's getting to go to. There we go. Oh, that's all right, see? It's nice, see? Upstairs, Ethel's foster carer, Rowena, has arrived to collect her. Yeah, I'm so excited to get her home. Not only for us, you know, we get to see how she is and, you know, play at home and see how she's doing, but I'm um, very excited to um, meet her new potential home and hopefully they'll be taking her soon. Hello, here she is. Hello, little one. She's like, who are you? I can barely recognise you again, you friends. Oh, oh, no. Hello. So she's done so well since the surgery. Not only has it made a massive difference, as you can hear, to her breathing and that she's not making hardly any noise now, which is wonderful, but also transformation in her personality. Like she's really come out of a shell really, just that's amazing being with us for such a short period of time and you're really getting a bit waggier and a bit happier and certainly breathing better. So that's emotional so and physical results. So yeah. Well done Ethel and well done all of you. I really feel today is the start of a new chapter for Ethel. She's had a terrible start in life. It's literally had her puppyhood robbed from her. She hasn't had access to the great outdoors. She hasn't had medical treatment. She hasn't had love. And now we've been able to treat all of those particular issues and work on her shyness and her emotional side. And hopefully now she'll be a happy, healthy, well-adjusted dog that can go off and enjoy life. I couldn't do anything about the tongue, however, because she has a massive tongue and a tiny mouth, so she'll always have her little tongue tip, won't you, sweetie? But hopefully now everything is as good as it can be for her to find a new home. It's amazing. That's so exciting. I'm sure she's very excited too. Probably don't realise it now. <laughs> yeah. All right. You're then. not going to want to leave. Bye, <laughs> See you later, Rowan. Thank Take you care. so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. And this week's number one. Hey, Laura, who you got there? This is little Oat. He's just come in. Oh, buddy, you look sad. Oh. Back home in Australia on a break from his London base, Scott has been called into action at the Sydney Dogs and Cats home. Have a look at his, his bottom. Oh, it's not good. Yeah. Cool. Scott is being assisted by colleague Audrey to treat the badly neglected Chihuahua stray. Ooh. Ooh. Yep. That is a big, nasty lump. Buddy. Wow, that is nasty. Yeah. That's massive. I've seen a lot of lumps in my time, but this one looks horrible, it's ulcerated, and it looks painful, and I really feel sorry for Little Oat. I know you're busy. Yeah. Is there anything you can do to help with that? Oh, no worries. Well, yeah, absolutely, we'll do our best. Thank you so much. Oh, buddy. Come here, little man. Come on in. All right. Oh, there's some nasty teeth in there, mm. and that smell. Oh, he's got some shocking breath. Oh, buddy. Mm, someone's not been brushing their teeth, have they? <laughs> Oat's breath is disgusting. And when you look inside, you can see he's got some really nasty teeth. The severity of Oat's symptoms means surgery that we're going to have to perform. Sad that someone's decided to dump him at such a ripe old age. Poor little man, he must be so confused and disoriented. Yeah. It's really sad when they have them for so long and they just give them up. Yeah. You're well, sweet. Two things that has to happen. Are you going to do the bum or should I do the mouth or Aww. should you do the mouth and I'll do the bum? Neither of them are pleasant jobs. Scissors, paper, stone. Go on then. Scissors, paper, stone. Oh! Scissors, paper, stone. Oh! No way! Scissors, paper, stone. Oh! Bum! Which one do you want? Bum. Okay, right, I'll do the I'm mouth. I'm doing your butt, butt. I think I got out of that quite well. <laughs> <laughs> I chose to remove the bum lump because one, I like surgery, and two, it actually smells way less down at his bottom end compared to his teeth. Good boy, all right. Yeah, Brave nice boy, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, Good boy. boy. Have a little snooze, yeah? yeah I'll sort you out. Oh, no, you're getting sleepy. It's okay, it's okay, thank you. Yes, I love you too. It's very concerning as a vet when you see an old dog that needs a lot of procedures doing. Anesthetics are always risky. Okay. 
suddenly, Oat stops breathing. Paddy, stop breath holding. I've just got to breathe for him. You can see his heart. Audrey must artificially breathe for the ageing Chihuahua, desperately hoping he'll resuscitate. Come on, buddy. I'll just move him into surgery, that might get him breathing again. Scott and Audrey abandon plans to X-ray Oat. They must operate immediately and finish their procedures as quickly as possible. Walk him through. Oh, now you start breathing. Now you start breathing, buddy. Come on. When it comes to patients like Oat who are elderly and have a number of conditions, with Oat we just need to get in there and get the job done. And he's such a sweet boy. He really is. We need to find him a good home. Yeah. I'm just glad he's breathing again. Nasty looking thing, isn't it? Oh, it's gross. It is quite superficial though, so I'm happy about that. Mm. So I'm just slowly going underneath the lump and hopefully we can get all of it out. How's the head end going? Oh, honestly, it's a dentist's worst nightmare. There's a lot of teeth coming out. There's another one. It's just coming out. They're just falling out. Oh, much. it's so rotten in his head. Yeah. I've seen teeth like this many times in rescue dogs. Unfortunately, it's just one of the many parts of the dogs that are neglected. It's out. Oh, Look well at done. that. That's an ugly looking lump. Yeah. As if the bum wasn't ugly, that made it worse. <laughs> I'm glad it's out though. Look at that. Teamwork. It's great. Well, look, this guy is going to be so much happier, I think, with all we've done. You've removed his nasty lump, and I've lump. removed a whole bunch of nasty teeth. Yeah, he's going to be feeling good in the front end and the back end. Yeah, so hopefully it's just a case of him now living a, as much life as he has left. I suppose the challenge of treating a rescue animal or an abandoned animal is you just have no history. So you don't know how long they've been suffering with certain symptoms, you don't know how fast things have grown. So it does make things a little bit difficult because you are flying blind. And as much as I love you, Scott, I've got to go to an emergency. Oh, okay. <laughs> no rest for the wicked. No, so all right. So I'm going to leave you to recover him. Sure. Tell okay, him fine. I love him and I'll see you soon. I will. And, right. oh, and you're leaving me with all the mess. Yeah, clean up for me. All right, great. All right, see ya. Bye, Audrey. Bye. Check ya. I've really enjoyed working with Scott. It's not very often that the Bondi Vet team comes together. You all right, buddy? Hey. Your breath is so much better now. You can give everyone kisses, can't you? Hey, good boy. Let's go and put you in your bed. Come on then, gorgeous. Here we go, little man. Hey, you can go and have an old man nap. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way.